Uh, for those, I think I've met most people, but I'm Nat Richardson. I'm the president and CEO of the University of Maryland Capital Region Medical Center here. I've been here about 22 months, and it has been a whirlwind and joy. And I, I want to start by thanking you for your support and all of the calls that we've gotten to make sure that we are truly designing and structuring a hospital that will deliver on its promise here in Prince George's County. So I want to thank you. I want to thank the media for getting the word out about our facilities and the various programs that we have. I want to thank you, the community, for embracing this momentous moment, as well as the journey that we've had from June 12th and even before June, back, going back when we joined the University of Maryland Medical System, becoming the University of Maryland Capital Region Medical Center, and the journey that we are going to be moving forward for. This is really exciting, an incredible program, but this could not have happened without the community, with our elected officials, key stakeholders, and everyone just really partnering together to understand what are the needs in the community and how can we design a structure to ensure that we're meeting those needs, not just a building, we can do bricks and mortars all day long. We can put nice carpet in. We can design buildings and make them look really, really pretty. But what are we doing with inside those buildings to deliver on the health care here in Prince George's County? And that has taken all of us to get to that moment. I want to start, again, thanking you for coming out in this extremely uh, challenging weather. We're celebrating the groundbreaking of a cancer center, part of the promise that we made as we developed the University of Maryland Capital Region Medical Center and this health facility. I want to first start by thanking Dr. Mohan Santa. He's responsible for bringing me here 22 months ago, and Mohan, I still say yes today. Um, you, this is. Um, <laughs> This was a great move for me, but I really appreciate his leadership because Mohan took over at a time where we were all challenged across the world with the pandemic and so many different difficult decisions that we had to make to keep ourselves moving forward. So Mohan, thank you. Really appreciate your leadership, your drive, and your passion of healthcare. That's, what, that's how we win with a leader who believe in uh, winning. Next, I'd like to thank our board chairman, Judge Williams, who has been a phenomenal leader on our board here locally at Capital Region Medical Center. And he's really been one that is totally invested in Prince George's County and an advocate for this county. And without a good board chairman, it's hard to create a vision and create the structure that's needed to change health care here in this county. So I want to thank uh, Judge. Williams, the board, the entire governing board, our corporate board who has supported us so much here at Capital Region because we're in an organization that's trying to grow into something different. Historically, we have been a hospital that was critical care, trauma, and safety net. We're now developing into a hospital that is all comprehensive, that we meet all of the health care needs, not just a specific sector of needs within health care. And we couldn't do that without our corporate board support, our local board support, all of our caregivers and team members. There are several of our amazing physicians in the audience that has been a part of this journey to change up health care in Prince George's County. And we're just so proud to be a part of this journey and what we will be in the future. I want to thank the team members that come in day in, day out especially in an environment where there's so many shortages with nurses, shortages with allied health professionals and other ancillary support, they have stayed the course with us. And they have made sure that we continue to deliver the care that we've promised here in this county, regardless of the challenges that we've had from the standpoint of economics and the workforce challenges that we've had with shortages. So I get the opportunity to introduce our, one of our speakers here today who has been an amazing supporter. And while I've only been here for 22 months, I have studied the state. I have studied specifically Prince George's County. And this um, next leader that we will um, invite to the podium has just been amazing with his support. And that's our governor, Governor Larry Hogan. Governor. I personally want to thank you for the work that you have done for this state. 
I know that you have the passion in your heart. I've said before, it's always an ask. We've never asked the governor, how's the governor doing? How's your family doing? I was taught many days ago that, you know, the pastor gets up and he preached, but who's praying for the pastor? I want you to know we're praying for you and your family, and we thank you for the work that you've done for this state. Thank you specifically for your support here in Prince George's County, and we'd like to invite you up to see a few works. Thank you so much. Well, well, thank you all very much. It's great to be back in Prince George's County, back home. Every time I come, the County Executive also Brooks says, welcome home. And I like that when she says that. It's great to be back here in Prince George's County, and I'm especially uh, pleased to be here for this life-saving uh, project that brings us together here today. Uh, as we break ground, even though we're breaking ground inside, uh, it's a little rainy out there, but we're going to move some dirt, I think. Um, break some ground on uh, a best-in-class cancer center, the first ever of its kind right here in Prince George's County. And, I, and I'm speaking today not just as a governor who's helping to make this project happen, but also as a cancer survivor and a former patient um, about the game-changing impact that this state-of-the-art facility is going to make you know, a few years ago, I waged my own battle with uh, an aggressive cancer, and I became an extended stay patient at UMS, University of Maryland Medical System, and the incredible doctors and nurses at UMS quite literally saved my life. Um, and I had the opportunity to meet some incredible fellow patients and their amazing families, uh, and fighting cancer became a mission for me. And on the day that I found out that I was cancer-free, I pledged that um, as long as I was governor of this great state and long after that, I was going to uh, continue to stand with all of those who are fighting against this terrible disease. And we've been working hard to increase access to treatment, to raise awareness. And just last week, I announced my Maryland Cancer Moonshot Initiative, which dramatically expands all of our efforts to detect, prevent, treat and find a cure for cancer so that we can save more lives. We're committing $216 million uh, to jumpstart this far-reaching initiative, including $100 million for the expansion of the University of Maryland Greenbaum Cancer Center in downtown Baltimore to provide state-of-the-art inpatient and outpatient cancer services we're committing $25 million for the University of Maryland School of Medicine and Johns Hopkins University to accelerate uh, cancer research projects, more than $20 million for the Maryland Stem Cell Research Fund, $2.5 million to expand the state's life sciences and biotechnology research workforce, another million dollars to expand pediatric cancer research, and today, right here in Prince George's County, we're investing $67 million to fully fund the construction of this brand new comprehensive cancer center. And it's gonna be right here on the campus of the uh, Maryland Capital Region Medical Center, which we were so excited to be here with you to open this just last year. But with this game-changing Cancer Moonshot Initiative, we're going to harness the power and capacity of our world-class Maryland public health, education, and research facilities to produce the talent, the tools, and the treatment that will help us make decades worth of progress in just a matter of years, and to make Maryland a powerhouse at the very forefront of the nation's efforts to defeat this dreadful disease. Now, this is very near and dear to my heart, um, you know, because I know how difficult it is to get that life-altering diagnosis and to experience that feeling of not knowing what comes next. But it's also because uh, with the completion of this new cancer center, the neighborhoods where I grew up uh, and spent most, most, most of my life right here uh, in Landover, in Capitol Heights, in Largo, and in Upper Marlboro, and all of Prince George's County will be able to receive the high-quality cancer treatment and medical care that they deserve right here 
right here. They're going to have access to some of the best doctors and nurses and healthcare professionals in the entire world. And I'm proud to be here to help you launch this transformative project. Uh, it really is incredible, but it's really just one part uh, of our bold plan for the future of Prince George's County. And I want to say thanks to County Executive Angela Alsa Brooks and her vision. Uh, we have agreed to partner with her on a shared commitment to move forward with a $400 million investment in the Blue Line Corridor project to bring more jobs and economic development right to this area. And, and lastly, uh, after more than seven years of tireless effort, we're making great, great project progress on finally bringing the FBI's new headquarters and 7,500 jobs to Prince George's County, as if we didn't have enough going on. But I just want to say uh, congratulations and thank you to everyone uh, who has been involved in this project and will be involved in this project. And all of this great progress for Prince George's County is uh, another example that together we really are uh, changing Maryland and changing lives for the better. Thank you all so much. The next speaker certainly does not need any introduction because she has just been a staunch trooper throughout Prince George's County and surrounding counties. And that's our County Executive, Angela Alsebrooks. Angela, thank you so much for the work that you have done. I had to write these words down to make sure that I don't mess them up trying to rememorize those, uh, word, memorize those words. But I think about valor. I think about compassion, I think about kindness, but I think about drive and consistency when I think about our county executive. Those are the words that you have led by, and we want to thank you so much for your leadership and what you have done and continue to do for Prince George's and surrounding. Thank you so much, and if you'll come up and have a few words. Well, I have to say uh, good afternoon to, um, to each of you. I am so thrilled to be here this afternoon. This is such a huge day for us. Um, I want to start by just saying thank you to Nat Richardson, um, who just introduced me. And I have to tell you, the commitment that is demonstrated on a daily basis in this hospital is nothing short of amazing. Uh, what Nat didn't get to tell you is uh, over the many, many conversations that we've had, he and Dr. Suntha and the entire team, there was one that stuck out with me that demonstrates his own commitment in telling me that as a result of the labor shortage that we're seeing all across the country that has also impacted our hospital, he said to me one day, and not by way of just of congratulating himself, but he said, you know, we've been really short with transporters, so much so that he arrived at the hospital on several days and, and no one was here to transport patients. I want you to know that the president and CEO here transported patients himself including having to transport a few to the morgue here in the hospital. And so that is the level of commitment that we have seen in Nat Richardson, and it is nothing short of amazing. So I want to thank him so much. And then what do we say to this governor? And he's right. Every time I see him, I say, welcome home. And it is so fitting uh, that the governor receives that kind of welcome here because that's how he's treated us. From the very first day of his inauguration, for those who didn't notice, um, that it was very intentionally selected that he would come here to Prince George's County in this last inauguration to the National Harbor. He wanted to make sure that he started out um, his second term in Prince George's County. It hadn't been here in decades, and he wanted to make the, the very important statement about his commitment to his hometown. And I do want to thank him so much for the amazing partnership that we've shared over the years. Uh, and the, the continued investment that he's made in Prince George's County. And today is yet another example of that. Um, I just want to go backwards and tell you a little bit about um, how we got here, and then to tell you that the governor, we didn't expect it to happen quite as quickly as it did, uh, but we assembled a meeting October 28th. I had to go back and look at it. October 28th uh, came over to a conference room here, and I was here, and Dr. Santa and Nat, and we had uh, Chair Hawkins, and we also had uh, Senate uh, representation, and also uh, our chair here, uh, Nick Charles, came together to talk about the ways that we could support this hospital as we were facing our legislative session. It was Dr. Santa 
uh, who gave us the information about Prince George's County's standing where cancer was concerned and reminded us that uh, of all the cancer centers in the state, Prince George's County did not have one. And this meant that Prince Georgians had to leave Prince George's County to go get the life-saving treatment that they needed. Um, and so I honor the governor for making sure that it was not only possible for him to receive the life-saving treatment that he needed, uh, but to make sure that all of our families could receive that treatment and receive it right here. And so Dr. Santa said, you know, in this legislative session, uh, it would be great we have it planned somewhere down the road that we would have a cancer center, but do you think as a part of our legislative agenda, let's make, let's make a push for it now. Let's go to Annapolis and make the case today uh, that we needed $67 million. It seemed like an aggressive ask uh, to have this cancer center brought to Prince George's County. What we know about cancer in Prince George's is that we have one of the highest rates um, of four. There are four cancers in particular um, that we have here. It is lung cancer, colorectal, prostate, and breast cancer, where we have the single highest incidence of those cancers in the region right here in Prince George's. Yet, as I described to you, we don't have a single cancer center here. And it means that, uh, that families like my family, my mother is a breast cancer survivor, and my father's mother, father, and brother all died of cancer. Uh, and it meant in each of those instances, we had to go out to District of Columbia, other places, and travel to get the, the treatment that we needed. And so I am so grateful um, that we not only had a delegation, uh, I want to thank our Senate delegation chair, uh, Senator Joanne C. Benson, um, who is looking like a gentle lady here, but I have to tell you, boy, if you get her riled up, I tell you, she's a, she's a true fighter and a, a really amazing advocate for us. And also our chair of our uh, delegation, House delegation, Chair Nick Charles, uh, who likewise, the two of these folks, I tell you, they have really brought home um, so many resources for us, record breaking. We're gonna be really pleased to announce next week all that they were able to accomplish for Prince George's County, um, but saw it not Robert to make sure we had this to happen. And then of course, um, the chair of our council, Calvin Hawkins, we have other council members who are here as well, Daniel Glaros, Todd uh, Turner, as well as Jolene Ivey uh, are here, and, uh, and just all together kind of really working to make sure that this could happen for Prince George's. And so the $67 million uh, to infuse in this community is, is really literally going to save lives. Oh, Delegate Nicole Williams, I'm sorry, I didn't see her sitting here, also want to thank her. But it is going to save lives. Uh, that's an understatement. And again, I just want to say thank you so much, uh, not only to our delegation, but to this governor uh, who right away said absolutely. Uh, met with him, met also with our um, Senate president and our speaker, um, but it was the governor who said absolutely yes uh, to make sure that this could happen today. So we thank you so much again. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Dr. Santa also, who is an amazing advocate for all of us. Uh, and we're just excited to break ground today. Uh, and to do what we can to continue to save lives in Prince George's County. So thank you so much, everyone. So our next speaker, if you don't know her, it's because you have not lived in Maryland and you have not been awake. <laughs> and so I'd like to invite Senator Benson, who's just been a force in our state and has been here so many years helping so many people in so many sectors. So Senator Benson, I do want to thank you for your work, for in many, many years of work here in the Senate and various branches of the government. So if you'll have a few words. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Lottie, Dottie, and everybody. <laughs> Before I get started, um, I want to thank this governor. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been in Annapolis for a long time longer than I had planned to stay. But this year, this governor has joined hands with those of us, especially from Prince George's County, and he has helped us bring back money for some projects that we have been concerned about. I cannot help but say thank you to this governor for the way that he has put aside partisanship and dealt with the needs of the people in Prince George's County. 
And I really do think that we need to give this governor a round of applause. <laughs> to the council, to the people on, the, on this, what, what do we call this platform? <laughs> to all of you here, this is very important for me. It's very personal for me. This cancer center is very personal because you see, I am a 37 year cancer survivor. <laughs> and I promised God once I was cured of cancer that I would spend the rest of my life doing whatever I could to ensure that the people would have the opportunity to have treatment, women especially, that they would have treatment. I have been really praying and hoping for this day that the people in Prince George's County would not have to go outside of Prince George's County to seek the treatment that they needed. We do have a couple of hospitals here that work with cancer patients. But to have a cancer center with some of the top experts in the country to come here into Prince George's County, I really cannot express to you all how thankful I am. But I'm also thankful that we have a county executive who stepped up to the plate. We have senators and delegates and all of us, the county council, the, the chair, all of us put aside all foolishness. You all know I'm short on foolishness. And we made a decision that we were going to do what we could to work with the governor to get the center here. I am just overwhelmed on behalf of the senators to say to the governor, to the county executive, to this wonderful person who is leading the charge, thank you all. Thank you, because it is so desperately needed. If you look at the data, if you look at the statistics, if you look inside the Beltway, and by the way, this center is going to be it, as currently in the 24th Legislative District, but that doesn't matter. It's everybody's center, everybody's medical center. People from all over the metropolitan area, Virginia, everywhere, need this hospital, need this center. And I am just glad to be here to tell you all how joyful I am. But I'm also speaking for the little people, the little people who really cannot go outside of the county to get the kind of treatment and help that they need. So here we have the center where they're going to be welcome. And we are passing pieces of legislation in Annapolis to ensure that persons of Medicare and persons who don't have the insurance will have the opportunity to come here and it won't be a worry because it's about the business of saving lives. And so I want to thank everybody, every doctor, everybody who has played a role in helping us to bring back to Prince George's County the $67 million that's needed to get this center up and running. And so, God bless all of you all who are in this room. Because let me, as I sit down, you can't imagine what it's like when you're told that you have cancer. It, it, it's, it's hard. But with a cancer center, with the best and the brightest working, it does give hope to many people. And so I am just happy to be here. Uh, I had 
the state trooper to bring me up up, up here because I didn't I didn't want to miss this opportunity, but also it was with the help of the most wonderful president of the Senate, uh, who said, Senator Benson, yes, you need to be there. And I really want you all to know that I am overwhelmed with joy to be here and look forward to coming through here almost every day because I can almost walk here from my home. So I will be here and I may have to, you know, I, I, I'll help. I will help. I want you all to know that I will help with this center. I will be here nosing and, and talking and asking questions as I did with the, with the University of Maryland Capital Region Health, the, the, the hospital. So I'm just very happy to be here. And God bless all of you all. You take care of your health. Your health is your wealth. And stay out of trouble while you're here in Prince George's County. <laughs> The next speaker, and that is extremely hard to follow. So the next speaker, what I appreciate about this leader the most is he's always asking, what else can we do? How can we help? How can we be of assistance? And I do truly believe in the time that I've spent with him, he means that from the heart. So we'd like to ask the, the chair of the House of Delegates to come up, uh, Delegate Charles. Good evening, everybody. It is a beautiful day in Prince George's County. Uh, even though the rain is out, God is shining his light on us today. So once again, give a round of applause. It's a beautiful day in Prince George's County. You know, I, I, I too remember that meeting the county exec talked about when uh, we came and we met with Dr. Sunta and um, we talked about what could we do for Prince George's County you know, how can we make life better for our constituents? And he brought up this cancer center, and when he started talking about all of the numbers and all of the stats and, and what we needed, it was something that we all got behind and we actually stepped out here uh, and came to Annapolis with a mission, and we got behind our county executive, and I want to thank her for her vision and for her message. The county exec helped us lead the way uh, and laying out her objectives, what she wanted for this county and what we all could get behind. And Dr. Sunta, I hope this is something that you can truly uh, put your cap on, knowing that this is something you've done within your time being here. So thank you again. And to our governor, thank you, sir. Thank you for everything that you've done for us here as well. Uh, and we could not have gotten any of this done without the support of some key strong figures in Annapolis. Uh, from the House delegation, we had Delegate Julian Ivey. I'd like to thank him for his work. I'd like to thank our second vice chair, Delegate Nicole Williams, for all of her hard efforts. And we cannot forget Delegate Ben Barnes. His work with making sure we had the money in the budget uh, was critical to making this happen. And we also can't forget Senator Melanie Griffith for her work on the Senate side and all of the great work that she did to make this available for Prince George's County as well. And so to the Senate President, to our great House Speaker, Adrian Jones, I'd like to thank them for the work that they put in to make sure that Prince George's County was not left behind. It is our time today, folks. It's our time to make the difference. And so I thank you all. Enjoy Prince George's County. Our next speaker, I think I've said a few words about him earlier, and um, that's Dr. Mohan Santa. This should certainly be a proud moment for him as an oncologist himself in bringing cancer to one of his 13 facilities, specifically here for Prince George's, when you think about the disparities that we've had in this county. So Dr. Santa, if you would come up, I'm so proud to work beside you, and I appreciate you as a leader. All right, good afternoon. good afternoon. So when I think about life sometimes, I marvel at the symmetry of life. So I'm going to think back to, take you back to February 1971. 
because it was in 1971 that we as a nation decided we needed to declare war on cancer. We as a nation had to do something different to understand how we were going to advance society by dealing with this dreaded disease. And when you think back to that, uh, to that declaration of war on cancer, and you think about the National Cancer Act, 1971, it took a president and it took a legislative body to advance the needs of a nation. So I want you to imagine the symmetry of life that I reference, and I want you to think about Congress in 1971, because there was, in fact, a congressman representing Maryland, representing parts of this county in 1971, who was part of that declaration that we as a nation had to acknowledge that we had to do something different if we were going to attack the scourge of cancer. And I want you to fast forward to today. And I want you to think about how a governor and a legislature and a county exec and a county council all came together to address the unmet need here in Prince George's County. And you can imagine why I sometimes marvel at the symmetry of life. So I think back, as, a, as uh, Nat mentioned, I am uh, privileged to be a member of the faculty of the University of Maryland School of Medicine, and very specifically, a radiation oncologist in the Department of Radiation Oncology. And I remember when I told my father, now years ago, who he himself had spent his professional life in the fight against cancer, that I had decided I was going to pursue a uh, professional career in the fight against cancer, he reminded me of a saying that I have tried to keep in my mind with everything that I do in my professional life. And that is to remember that a healthy man has many wishes. A sick man has but one. And when you think about that and you think about what it is that we're celebrating today, Governor Hogan spoke about it very passionately. Senator Benson spoke about what it means to hear of a diagnosis of cancer. And you think about what we are very purposefully doing by creating this access point for cancer care in a county of nearly a million people. The notion that this county has for so long gone without, and now today we are saying no more, is a statement about our understanding about what our collective responsibilities are. And so we at the University of Maryland Medical System, when we think about these kind of investments and we think about uh, the way that we go about attacking uh, these kind of challenges, Governor Hogan again spoke about his own personal experience with what we describe as a differential resource that defines who we are as the University of Maryland, both medical system, school, and school of medicine, and that is the incredible resource that is the Marlene and Stewart Comprehensive Cancer Center at the University of Maryland. When I think about the Greenenbaum Cancer Center, I obviously always want to start with the acknowledgement of the incredible leadership of my friend and colleague, Dr. Kevin Cullen, who is in the audience. And Dr. Cullen, he deserves again, unique credit for having a vision of how a cancer center can make a difference in the lives of patients, not just today, but also tomorrow. Because you see, 1971, when you think about the National Cancer Act, one of the things that that act did was actually define the need for NCI-designated comprehensive cancer centers. That act, in 1971 is what led to the creation of comprehensive cancer centers that the National Cancer Institute understands provides a unique resource. As a comprehensive cancer center, we think about the responsibilities that we have to not, to think about the cures of tomorrow while we are assuming the responsibility of delivering the care today. And the way we have gone about this in across our health system in partnership 
uh, with physicians all across the state of Maryland, our faculty, our community physicians, is to understand that it is through partnerships that we drive improving access and improving outcomes. And so my hope is that today, uh, it is indeed a great day in Prince George's County. It is indeed a great day for the state of Maryland because I think what we are doing with these resources are investing in a proven winner when we talk about the Marlene and Stewart Greenenbaum Cancer Center. We are investing in proven winners when we think about the physician communities and the partnerships that we are looking to form. We are look, talking about, again, investing in success. And so we are at the University of Maryland incredibly humbled uh, by the generosity of our partners across the state of Maryland. And we understand we have a responsibility to be good stewards of these resources, to ensure that we meet the needs of our communities, and we will do so, and we will do so with passion and with energy. So one of the other realities of being the University of Maryland medical system and our partnership with our School of Medicine is we love to describe our unique role in academic medicine. So in academic medicine, we describe our mission as a three-part mission. That mission is to provide highest quality, cutting-edge clinical care. It is also to think about and own the responsibility of innovation. And the third part of that mission is to commit to the education of the future healthcare workforce. So our last speaker today is, I think, everything that we aspire to be when we talk about our commitment to educating the future healthcare workforce of the state of Maryland. You will hear her personal story. You will understand why she is so passionate about the commitments here in Prince George's County, and you will understand, therefore, my hope is what it means to invest in organizations like ours, because this is the kind of talent that will be taking care of you, of your loved ones, for the next generation. And it will fall to her and her colleagues to continue the legacy that is being built by the leaders who are in this room today. And so without further ado, let me introduce uh, my friend, my colleague, and at one time, my re resident uh, who, who had some level of accountability to me back, uh, back in the day. Uh, Dr. Mel uh, Weifhaus is a, an incredible physician uh, who we are very proud uh, to describe as one of our proud graduates of the Department of Radiation Oncology. Mel, come on up here. I have accomplished all of my goals in life right now. Dr. Suntler just called me his friend. <laughs> uh, good afternoon, Governor Holgan, uh, County Executive Angela Alsobooks. Thank you all, distinguished speakers, for having me. Guests, good afternoon. My name is Melissa Weifhaus. Uh, I am a radiation oncologist uh, and a visiting assistant professor at the University of Maryland School of Medicine. But more importantly, I come to you today as a lifelong resident of Prince George's County. I was raised in Prince George's County. My first job was actually in Landover Mall, not too far from here. Uh, not too long ago, not too, too long ago, I graduated from Eleanor Roosevelt's High School Science and Technology Program. With the support of my teachers and guidance counselors, I became a Meyerhoff Scholar at UMBC and graduated with a bachelor's in biochemistry. My mentors from UMBC, which was, I was fortunate enough to include Dr. Freeman Rabowski, equipped me with the skills to become a successful MD-PhD student at the University of Maryland School of Medicine. After earning my degrees, I uh, loved Maryland so much that I was fortunate enough to complete my radi radiation oncology residency at the University of Maryland uh, with Dr. Suntha as one of my mentors, and actually stayed on as faculty. But none of that could have been possible without the resources given to me as a Prince George's County resident and student. A close mentor of mine, Mr. Lamont Tolliver, who was a director of the Meyerhoff program uh, for some time at UMBC, used to always tell me, to whom much is given, 
much is expected. And my community has given me so much that I am truly joyful to be given an opportunity to now serve my community through excellent cancer care. Building a cancer center here in Prince George's County ensures that my neighbors have access to state-of-the-art radiation delivery systems, access to nationwide clinical trials that help advance cancer treatments, and the most recent up-to-date FDA-approved targeted agents that aid to personalize cancer care. And yet the best technological and genetic advances in cancer therapy are only as good as the healthcare team that delivers them. The University of Maryland Medical System and Greenbaum Cancer Center has an excellent track record of recruiting physicians, nurses, and other essential healthcare staff that provides high quality, compassionate, and family-centered cancer therapy. Many, if not all, of my colleagues treat their patients as they would their family members. And this is what I envision for my Prince George's County community. I am confident that the University of Maryland Medical System is committed to bringing superior cancer resources to my Prince George's County neighbors and family. My entire family is integrated within this community. My parents, who are actually in the back, they live in Capitol Heights. My sister lives in Suitland. My in-laws live in Lanham. My children, nieces and nephew, they all attend Prince George's County Public Schools. All of my loved ones live here. Um, and it brings me such comfort to know that we will provide our Prince George's County residents, family, our neighbors with convenient, equitable, and fantastic cancer care. Thank you so much. And thank you all for doing all the hard work. <laughs> so as we close this evening, or uh, this afternoon out, I. Again, I again want to thank you so much for your participation. I want to thank you for your support. I want to thank you for your passion and your drive to drive us to do good in health care. One of the things my, you know, I was raised by a Navy dad and an Army mom, so there was no discipline in the household whatsoever. <laughs> um, but when our collective minds resolve in collaborative conversations, miracles like this cancer center is what's created. So we've got to continue to partner and collaborate in everything that we do. We want you to know that we're here to serve Prince George's and any of the other surrounding counties that feel you need great health care. It's right here in Largo, in Suitland, at the National Harbor, in Bowie, and in Laurel. That's where we exist as the University of Maryland Capital Region Medical Center. So I do want to end by saying thank you. Thank you to all of our elected officials. Governor, your amazing work. Dr. Santa as our leader. County Executive, also Brooks. Delegate Charles, Chairman, and Senator Benson. And so many other leaders that are out in our audience that are elected and or not. We appreciate and we thank you so much for everything that you've done to get us to this point. We'll have a photo op and we'll uh, end the program here, so thank you. <laughs> Judge Williams, um, <laughs> Judge Williams. <laughs> Okay. And then we just toss the dirt back in the tray there. Three, two, one. Get a little, get a little, get a little. Count that. One, two, three. There you go. Woo! Three, two, one. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs>